All right. Uh, hey there, Sam back with you here. Uh, January 2nd. Had some other members interested in NEO to the dollar. I've got it up here. This is the four hour on Bittrex. Now, this one, I got to say, this is a really tough one. This is, you know, for an LA this is this is this is really tricky, tricky trading here. So, you know, I, I'm going to take you through this. And you know, if you're if you're new to Elliott Wave, you you might you know watch what I'm about to do here and go, you know, screw that. That, that that's just way too complicated, way too hard. Why do I need to do that? You know, I, I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to what kind of value it adds. I would tell you that the the discipline of doing this will make you a better trader. It will make you understand uh, the Elliott theory and the rule set within Elliott Wave uh, infinitely better. This is not easy. It takes time. It, you know, you've got to fuss with it and figure it out. And you've got to try and stay consistent with the rule set. And I'm telling you, this is one of the hardest counts I've, I've come across I, uh, you know, I, that I can remember in, in crypto. V very tricky count. So here, let's just go through it, right? So here... So we, so I've got so Neo to the dollar on Bittrex. We're going back all the way to the lowest low. So here on the four hour, right? So if we look here at the at the time, you know that was an enormous move. This this was, <laughs> you know, if you were in early here, that that was one hell of a move. And we can see we get a one, two, we get a three, four, and we find we complete a big one wave. So at that time, if you're if you're looking at that, you know that's a home run ball. Percentage return is just a you know, obscene. So if, if, if the assumption being, if I've got a completed five wave sequence here, well, I'm expecting now my second to correct that. So if I go from my absolute low here up to my one wave high, which we can do now in hindsight, because we know that was just the beginning of this. Well, you can see the two wave, you know, just a couple of ticks in front of the 786, which is, you know, kind of like, you know, as I will often tell you, this, the second wave can go anywhere from the 50 to the 786. It can go deep, and there, you know, we had reaction here, reaction here, and it ends up going all the way to the seven eight six. Okay, well now, so at, at that point, and that's not that long ago. That's September fifteenth, right? So we're three months, three months ago. I got a two wave. Okay, so if I, if I've got a so I've got a big one two. Now, how do I know it's a two? Because it went to the seven eight six, and he, so you can see here prior resistance here offering some support. Just structural support. Here's the key number. We hold the 786. Tells me I've got it. I can get an A, three wave B. Then I come down. Here's the, here's the one, two, big three. So it ends in a diagonal to finish the second wave. Okay, well, if I've got my two wave in, well, now I'm expecting a five wave impulsive structure to complete the third wave. So now if I, so let me, if I pull out all the way, let's see if I can get this in some in some context for you. So if I look out at this, well, so one thing you can see, we've just wicked a perfect algo target. So if I look at that and say, okay, well, if this is my one, two, then, you know, anticipating that I'm going up for the very largest three. So let me, so here's my largest three up here. So of the largest degree, now I have degrees within degrees, right? So always waves within waves within waves. So here's my largest degree up here. So I've got some really, you know, substantial targets. So if we, if we do, you know, as I will often suggest, you take the length of one, project from the two low, and we look for those high probability zones. Well, here's the highest probability for a third between the 1618 and the 175. And we're now approaching that. But this, this is, I'm going to show you, this looks like we're not complete yet. So we have some even higher targets up here. Here's the 2618. So we've got potentially, here's the negative 618 from the algo pull from the from the two wave here, right? Do you see how they line up on the edge? So here here's the negative 1618, a, a, a real extreme from an algo pull. Here's the 2618, which is an extreme for a third wave. Rarely do they go beyond that relative to the length of the one wave projected from the two. So I got some juicy targets up here that, that where this could be going, which is I propose to you the, the reason to go through and do this work and again, qualify your pivots. So you can look, so, I mean, look, all you ever get is probabilities. That's all you get in trading. So I'm trying to identify the high probability zones for the count that I'm proposing that we have here, at least as I see it. So it, right now, I, I propose that we're completing a third wave relative. So just so one, two, then here's one, two, three, four, five. I'm still trying to complete the third of the larger degree. And I don't know where that's going to complete. But as I see it, I've got my third 
of my third. You see that? So one, two, here's the third of my third of the largest degree. So if I go down to some smaller time frames here, this will start to make sense. Again, the point being, the purpose of qualifying this is one, to, to reinforce your, your, your knowledge of how, how to do a count and how to use these probabilities and this statistical data that we have available to us now to look for, okay, where can I enter this market with reasonable risk reward and where do I know when I'm wrong? Have I qualified these pivots so that I know if I'm looking for my fourth to complete the fifth, I know where that probability zone is and where I'm wrong? So if this is impulsive, well, we don't we don't want my, my well, this would be even higher. So if this is if this is my one wave here of the third, I certainly don't want my fourth wave coming down to take out the one. That would be deep, right? So we'd be long out because we wouldn't give it that much risk. But we want this structure to stay impulsive. So I've got you know then it gets very tricky in here. But this one two to potentially to my third here. So I've got a good probability zone here. Here would be my fourth going up for the fifth. So that's what I'm trying to find because that's that's a substantial move. So I can if I can get an entry here to, uh, on my fourth looking for that fifth, I've got just phenomenal risk reward. And and I've lowered the risk in terms of where where I know I'm wrong, where where the the count needs to be reevaluated. So let me I'm going to go down to down to the one hour so we can make some sense of this. All right, so it gets this gets very tricky. So let me I'm going to pull this this off for the moment. Okay, so here's here's where it gets tricky. So we we start out and we get we get a we can see a, a beautiful five wave subdivision here into my one wave. So one, two, three, four, four doesn't overlap the one. I get a really nice there there's my one wave. Okay? And then I go let's take all this off here so we can recreate it here so then I go so I've got a one so I'm expecting I'm looking for my two I've got beautiful subdivision into my into my into my one wave knowing right as we just showed here knowing that a two wave can go anywhere from anywhere between the 50 to the to the 786 well I go a little deeper and I get that spike here so likely some stop running here uh, on the other side of the 65 so I get a little uh, a little stop run there let me tighten this up there so I, I get a two that qualifies. Okay, that makes sense. This is a, you know, it's a choppier two than I would like to see, but it, it qualifies. So we get some complexity. So we get an A, B, C, then, then, then we, so we get an A wave. Here's our B wave. Then we go into this long extended C wave and it's, it's, it's not gorgeous. I, you know, and it takes too long and it's, it's not ideal. But when, now as we look back here, what, so why does it matter? What, what's the point of it? What, what, why don't we just go, okay, pivot? So if it's a two, and even though I don't like this, that tells me that now if I've got a one, two, this pivot is important to me and this pivot is important to me because this is where we start to go up. So does it qualify as a two? Yeah, it qualifies as a two. So from here, so first thing I would do, and again, I'm doing this in hindsight, I understand that. So the first thing I do, just to see, is it trading technically? So I'm going to go up to my one, I'm going to project from my two. So the first thing I get is a corner pocket trade. So that's a good sign, tells me that likely algo activity is in here. So here's from my two, here's my corner pocket. From this pivot, if these three pivots hold, if these are good, one, two, one, from my start here to my one to my two, if this holds, I've got an 80% probability of making the median line. And look where my algo target is. So we get a little hot box here and we make it to the median line just beyond the algo target, and then we get our correction. So that tells me a couple of things. One, it's trading technically. Likely algo activity is in. And, I, and I, I've got a good pivot now. I've got a good pivot here. So let me, let's take this off. We've already had that reaction. So here was the corner pocket. So first winner. So given that, now, this is where it gets a little tricky. So it would it would be you know you you'd have to make a decision as to whether this was a one two or wh whether this was one two three four five to complete the one. So you got to look at this and say, well, could this be the one or is this the one? Well, now as we go back in hindsight, right? Because th this is where it matters. We because we can look forward here. We can look as to what the price action has been and say, well, here's the deepest retracement that I had from my my swing high up here. Okay, so, this, which I propose is, is our third of this one, two. Here's the deepest retracement. Well, I know if I'm in a third 
I can't have a diagonal. It disqualifies the count, and I've got to I've got to consider something else. So if this is if this is my one, this is the if this were my one, I've got a diagonal. Can't have a diagonal in the third wave. So that can't be my one. So this has to be my one. So I can get a three, four, five out of that as a one, two, and then so I, I in effect what I end up with is a one, two, one, two. So the, it's from that pivot here because I know this is important. I know this is important because I, I hit the median line here. So now I get a, an A, B, C into a 1, 2. Right? So that, that pivot becomes important to me and it comes into play again over here. So this is my 1. Then I go into a 1, 2. Here's my 3. Why do I think that's my 3? Because I'm going to measure it. So if from here, if this is the start of my 1, and that's my one, and I go down to my two. Well, here's my high probability zone for my third, right? Right here. Well, we go a little bit beyond it, but this qualifies and is the likely candidate for my three. Then I get my reaction here for my four. The, that, that plays because it, the four can't overlap the one because I'm in a third. So this, you know, it's not perfect. It goes a little bit beyond it, but that gives me the, the count that plays. As a three, four, we go up to the five to complete the three. Now I have a count that, that doesn't violate any Elliott rule set, and then it, it, it plays. So I've gotten so now I'm working within this this these median lines within this pitchfork, and I can see, okay, well, I get this deep, deep correction. So let me take some of this off here so I can just clear it up. So on the assumption that I've got a three shallow four up for a five to complete my one, right? Do you see it here? So one, two, three. Look at the size of my four. That's a big four. So this can't be the one relative to that three because we would overlap here. We'd be in a diagonal. Can't have a diagonal there. So that I propose to you that what we get here is a one, two, three, four. Complete the three here. Then I get an A, B, C into my A. Here's my B, and then here's my trademark, my, my quintessential crypto C wave right at the prior res, uh, resistance here for the one wave. So I get an A, B, shallow, truncated C right at the lower parallel of the median line to give me a 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Here's my 4, not here. That's the A wave. Here's my 4 before I go up to complete what now I propose to you is a 5 wave structure that is an impulsive wave. Not an easy one to count. It takes a lot of experience to know how to count that. A lot of practice with this and knowing what to look for. But this, this all makes sense now. So, I, so I've qualified these pivots. Okay, if this is my 2, this is my 3, and this is my 4, well, now I'm looking for some sort of relationship there. So from my 2 to my 3. Well, look here. So we go deep here. So this, you know, you could easily have made the case that it was a buy here at the 618 and you get stopped out. I, I wasn't in that trade. But he, as we come back down here, here's the qualifier. So we come uh, just a couple of ticks shy of the 618. Here's the one high, prior resistance. We're right at the median line. That tells me I've got good probability that I'm in a fourth here, that I've got my one Right, this four not overlapping this, even the extreme spike down here doesn't overlap this. It actually doesn't even overlap the prior one way over here. Right? See, I've got that wicked off. So we hold here. So all good, all good. So now look where we go. So from this, so all I'm doing is pulling now, having gone through all of that to qualify this is my three, this is my two, and this is my four, look where we go. To, to the tick. We get the upper parallel. That's 200%, right? So I qualified these pivots so that I know that I've got high probability that my median line, that my pitchfork is dialed in to the right pivots. Okay, so then, so pulling from my two to my three to my four right here at the 618 and the lower parallel, look what I get here. So that tells me that I've got the count right, or at least at this point, right? So, and then look at the reaction I get. So the algos get their target, right? So here's the algo pull. That's the move they get. They get their target. Here's the upper parallel, and it starts to sell off. So what have I got now? I've completed my five-wave sequence. I've got the fifth, and you can see in here. So I get, so look here. So let me open this up. So again, it's this, it's, you just see this over and over again. So I get my one, my two. Right, so here, now let me pull, here's, I'm wicking off my one here, right, here's my four, four doesn't overlap the one, here's my three, I get an ABC, I get a, tr again, well, I get a double bottom into my fourth, up I go, 
into my fifth. So I've completed now. So again, the point of all of that is that I have now completed a five-wave structure relative to this two to give me my third. Do you see that? So now I've got, I've qualified the thing. It was not easy to get a count that worked there. It took me some time to figure that out, and I wasn't anticipating that, which is why I'm a little bit late in getting these videos posted. Very, very tricky count. This was the part that made it very tricky because that disqualified the, the obvious count. It disqualified it because the expectation, the thought was that this was the one. But because I know I can't have a diagonal in my third wave, that can't be the one relative to this two. This has to be it because we don't overlap. And the fact that it comes down and doesn't get there reinforces that. Here's my four to the 618, right to the algo target, upper parallel. So again, what's the point of all that? Well, I've got, I've got my three in now. So I know I've got my three in. Look at, look at the reaction. We're already coming off of that. So now what am I anticipating? I'm looking for the A, B, C to come down here. So let me put the wave on it so it makes sense. So that so I'm look so I'm certainly expecting subdivision considering the complexity of how this is traded. So it could be here. We, you know again this is where where the median line. So I'm certainly going to keep these median lines on because they've look at all this action around the median line. We finally we break up. We go up to the upper the 200% of the of the parallel. I'm going to keep those on. I don't know where this A wave stops. I can't I, you know this would be a likely target between the three and the four of the prior of the prior five wave. That's a likely contender. Maybe we go up here. The the B is the push to get to new highs that fails. All right, so we, you know, again, you don't know where it is, but we're looking for a three, four, and then we're looking for this relative now. So now I've got to, well, I got to change this. So if if this is my third relative to my second, the draw and the pull that I'm looking for is from my two to what I propose is now the third. So here here's where I'm looking to get long for my fourth right here at the 38. This cluster down here. Now, it can be shallow. We can be anywhere from the 23 to the 38 and still qualify. So that plays just beautifully. If I can get a, a push back to the median line, love it. So where, so then, given that, if that's going to be my fourth, right? So here's the first target from that. If this is the algo, so I'm pulling from my two low to my three high. Here's the 38. Here's the 23, median line right in the pocket. Here's the first algo target. So if I scrunch this up, I can... Might have to go to a yeah. I'm gonna to have to go to a larger time frame. So let's go to the three hour and see if that shows. Okay, right. So here's my four. Maybe to complete right. So I'm looking to complete the three of the largest degree. You see that? That that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to complete because I can't ignore this. That was my one wave one two. We saw it was a perfect seven eight six. I'm looking for my third way up here. So I've qualified now how I'm getting there. Now this this could fail. I'm not saying that it must pass. It must follow this path, but that's that's the way that it can get there per an Elliott rule set. This is going to be important. I sure don't want to see that. Well, here's the 50 all the way. So I'm going to wick this off, right? So if now so this has to be impulsive. So I I can't overlap this. If my third is going to come play here, that's going to be important to me. Here's my one wave of this degree. That's important to me. So now this is where I'm looking to get long. Some anywhere in here. So this would be the sweet spot for it. 38 to the 50, anywhere over here in this zone, looking for these median lines to continue to influence the market. So it, it's too soon to make a call there, other than I know I, I feel I've got a fairly good handle on where I think the market is and where we are in the count. So right now, th th this doesn't need to be on my immediate watch list because I need more time to develop this correction. So this is a trade I'm going to watch. I'm going to look and see how deep we go into an A wave. If this sustains as my pivot here, if this holds, I mean, we, we don't know that that holds. So far, I've had a reaction there, but this could blast back up again. We, we don't know. Right now, it looks like this is a reasonable path. But remember, we see the, we see the truncated C wave all the time. So I'm sure going to pay attention to the, how the median line comes into play here. Just looking to qualify the next trade with, and then looking at my potential upside here. This is, you know, if, if we're going to come here, uh, well, I, I like that. Or, or if we're going to come even lower, all, you know, so it's to me, right, because I'm trying to get in the market with low risk with that kind of reward, it's worth doing the work. 
I'll let you decide whether it's worth it to you. All right, guys, I'll wrap it there.